I don't know why I'm being so honest in this interview, but um, a lot of people in the military, at least when I was in, not a lot, I'm not going to say a lot, but there's a percentage of people in the military, in the U.S. military, that are just in there because, honestly, they can't exist in the real world. They'd be in jail. Like, they're just sociopaths and, like, psychopaths and really morons who, like, sat in the back of the class and ate worms and shit. Like, those kids in class that are quiet, but they're, like, not, not smart. They're also stupid. They're just quiet. Those, that's, like, military kids. Yeah. And, like, um, yeah, they were just shitty people. Welcome to the Department of Information. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. The Department of Information is expanding through a revolutionary technology called Patreon. This will allow us to continue distributing independent content. For only five New Zealand dollars a month, our interns will receive exclusive content, including extended cuts, full-length interviews, and behind-the-scenes videos. For $20, our regional managers will receive the same exclusive content, an annual Christmas card, and our eternal gratitude. Finally, alongside all other perks, board members will be recognized at the end of each video. Please send your applications to patreon.com slash the Department of Information. Can you introduce yourself? Who are you? Why are you in New Zealand? My name is uh, JPEG Mafia and uh, I'm in New Zealand to play some music and buy drugs. Where's the best place you've ever performed? The best place? Like country? That's hard to say. I like performing in the UK because they just beat the shit out of each other at all the shows. So that's pretty fun. But um, that's hard to say. I don't really have a favorite, really. Like everywhere is kind of different. I, I couldn't really like pinpoint it. But um, I I'll say this. I like performing in... Um, I like performing in Baltimore, back back home. So that's probably like my favorite place to perform. Do you feel like you have a special connection when you perform there? Yeah, definitely. You know, I came up there musically, so when I go back, it's usually like crazy energy, you know, because it's just like I was, I came up around there, so. Mm -hmm. Some of your other early shows were in Louisiana in the Deep South. Yeah. What was it like performing there? <laughs> the complete opposite of what it's like performing now. Um, when I was in the South, I had, <laughs> I used to try to have hostile shows on purpose because of where I was. So every show was like a fight or an argument or just some, some kind of hostility to the point where I got used to it, you know? And when I went to Baltimore, I, I fit re right in because I was ready for like genuinely like hostile, like, I don't know if I'm getting out of here type shows. So, um, yeah, that, that's back when I was when I was very first starting out and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I figured the best way to do it was to stand in front of people who I knew hated me and like do what I do best. So it, that's the best way for me to learn, you know, that's the best way for me to get a real reaction. You know, um, I liked it. It was like a, a, a fucking, I don't know, a social test or something. It was like I was just testing out like how people react to things. So, yeah. Did you have any expectations that people would react in the way they did? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, dingy ass, the dingy ass, like, butt fuck nowhere, Louisiana, somewhere, just like playing shows to rednecks who don't even want me there in general. Definitely don't want to hear me rapping about them on stage. You know, it's like, I expected the worst, really. So. Yeah, I, I went I went out there looking for like hostility. I was in a bad place and I was just like, I'm gonna make it in music and I'm gonna do this and that. And I just like, I would just go to these like open mic things or like try to get booked at these random shows. And yeah, I, w I was ready for just a fight, literally. I was ready for just like people trying to jump me, anything. It was good. How old were you then? I was in my early 20s, I was probably like 20. Yeah, I was like 19 or 20, uh, somewhere around that age. Had you performed much before then? Was there, or was that kind of your thrown into the fire? That's the start. Yeah, I, n I never performed before that. that was the, I started performing then. That was my first shows. Like, that's how I learned how to perform and, like, learn how to, like, crowd control <laughs> everything. I really learned it from, like, you know, playing to, like, dumbass rednecks who wanted to fight me all the time. Because you ended up in Louisiana after moving around a lot. Yeah. Right. What was... 
do you think that's had a lot of an impact on kind of the topics you speak on and who you are as a person moving around a lot as a kid? Yeah, definitely. I have no stability. <laughs> Zero stability in my life as a child. So, um, you know, when you move around a lot, you see a lot of different things and you have a different perspective than most normal people. You know, a lot of things that people do normally, I had to like figure it out on my own because no one really taught me. I didn't really have much of a family. So, you know, moving around a lot and like not really having anybody to teach you how to exist in an adult world. I had to kind of just go out there and learn by trial and error. That's kind of why I'm so weird now, because like there's so many things I didn't learn correctly as a kid and I still don't know them. So like sometimes I'm just kind of off, you know, so because I just I literally just don't know some things. I don't know social cues sometimes. But um, yeah, I had to figure all that out, like literally raw dog it. Do you think you were viewing the world then from a child's perspective or did you grow up quicker than your peers? Uh, you have to grow up quicker. So I have I probably matured faster than the average kid. But at the same time, there's certain things that I used to I do. There's certain things I'd never learned, you know, so it's like in some aspects I'm more mature, but in some aspects I'm way emotionally stunted or like I don't know you know this some things I just have no clue about so like yeah like like for example I don't know how to ride a bike because I had no fucking father to teach me how to ride a bike I never learned and I can drive a car you know I obviously make my own money and whatever but yeah I can't get on the bike and go anywhere yeah. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? was it kind of scary growing up in that environment <clears throat> yeah it's terrifying it was, it was shitty but it's whatever, you know, it, it happens and um, I don't know. It just, if I didn't grow up in that environment, I, I definitely wouldn't be here. So it's, it, ultimately, I'm glad that I grew up the way I did, I guess, even if it was it was shitty. Do you think that's where like your kind of drive and worth it, work ethic comes from, like stems from fundamentally? Yeah, definitely, definitely. From like not having support um, yeah, I would say so. I would say, like, I overwork to, you know, fill in a void or something like that, that where, like, I don't know, a family should be or, like, or something like that, you know? But it, I, I think that's common for people, like, in this, um, in this industry or, like, in the entertainment. You know, they throw themselves into their work because there's nothing else, really. And moving kind of off field a little bit. You joined the military pretty young, straight out of school, right? Yeah. And how did how did that kind of happen for people who don't know? Could you explain that? Um, I was just really poor. <laughs> and uh, a recruiter came to my school and was just like, um, damn. <laughs> I don't want to tell you the real story because it's like, um, it, it, I'll say this. I, I was just very young and just in a bad position. And I had, going to the military was the best option for me at the time because there was zero other options. If I, wasn't, if I didn't join the military, I would be like just fucked somewhere, you know. Um, but yeah, joining straight out of school because uh, you have to wait till you have to be 18 to join. So like, um, yeah, I, straight out of school, I went straight in. What were your first kind of week like your first 10 days of actual deployment like in the military of oh, deployment <laughs> shitty as fuck so shitty um i got off the plane in um the first place i deployed was kuwait um i got off the plane and as soon as you get off the plane um you're in this weird it's just this odd area it's like this closed off deserty area and you step off and you ever like walk in, you ever like put your hand in the oven or something or just put your hand in something too hot and you're just like, whoa, you step back. Yeah. It's like you walk out, but it's like an oven and you can't step anywhere. So, so fucking hot. It's like 140 degrees or some shit like that. And I was like, okay, this is where I'm going to be for at for a year or so. <laughs> so yeah, my first 10 days was trying to adjust to the heat, which I never really did. Um, and trying to, just learn my job and do what I had to do and get the fuck out of there, really. And was it 
ever scary in the military? Like, what were the people like who you were kind of deployed with? Shitty. A lot of them are... I don't know why I'm being so honest in this interview, but um, a lot of people in the military, at least when I was in, not a lot, I'm not going to say a lot, but there's a percentage of people in the military, in the U.S. military, that are just in there because, honestly, they can't exist in the real world. They'd be in jail. Like, they're just sociopaths and, like, psychopaths and really morons who, like, sat in the back of the class and ate worms and shit. Like, those kids in class that are quiet, but they're, like, not smart. They're also stupid. They're just quiet. Does, that's like military kids yeah. and like um, yeah they were just shitty people and like me coming from where I came from and like having all the shit I had to deal with having to deal with just shitty people who don't know how to interact with anybody was kind of like I wanted to I just wanted I just needed to get the fuck out of there as soon as possible so I was just like I hate these people I hate this shit I don't like this environment I fucking hated the military. I still hate the military. The Air Force tried to get me to come and um, do some shit at the base. I told them, suck my dick, kill yourself, and I will never do anything for you ever in my motherfucking life. And if anybody asks me anything about y'all, I'm going to tell you exact. I'm going to tell them exactly what y'all did, how y'all was, and I'm going to be 100% honest. So that's all I got for the military. I have nothing but hatred and gun smoke for every single person I was in the military with, period. What kind of things did they do that made you have such kind of hatred towards them? Um, you know, the gist of it is just, um, it's hard to explain, man. It's, it's, it's a lot of shit. But they, they fostered an environment where, like, basically your rank meant more than anything else. Like, rather, before you're a human being, before you have opinions, it's just like your rank. So like, someone could be wrong, not know how to do their job, not know how to do this and that. And as long as they're higher ranking, they can do whatever they want. So basically, that sets the precedent for bullshit, <laughs> pretty much. So like, yeah, and me being someone who, you know, doesn't have social cues sometimes, doesn't have this, I got misunderstood a lot and treated like some kind of degenerate when it's just like, Am I a degenerate? Because I got out and I made something of myself. How many of those motherfuckers can? I know someone when I was in the military. I bet I'm kind of ranting. I know, so, I, know a, I know a bitch in the military right now who was my sergeant. She told me when I was getting out, she said, what are you going to do? Like, how are you going to survive out here? Easily, bitch. Like, <laughs> better than you ever will. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I hate those motherfuckers, yo. I hate them. And I'm being very soft with, like, the shit they're doing. They've done some genuinely, like, weird, horrible, illegal bullshit. So I'm just, I'm going to keep it there. But, like, yeah, the military, at least the part that I was in, the base that I was at, I don't have anything good to say about anybody there. Was it hard to kind of reintegrate back to society after getting discharged? I was ready for it. I was like... (laughs) <laughs> when I was in, I was like, oh, God, I hate this shit. Like, I, I just, my, I mentally, like, was out of it as soon as I got in. I was like, nah. So, um, no, nah, it wasn't really hard. I got out, started doing my thing, started working on music, eventually found my way to Baltimore. And, like, yeah, eventually became uh, who I am now. So I got out, and I had a goal, and I had a plan, and um, I set out, and I, I achieved it for the most part. And I'm still going. So, yeah, no, it wasn't hard at all. I mean, it was hard in a way like I was broke and like had to like figure that kind of shit out. But I don't really count that shit. That's just what you have to do. But as far as like, was it mentally uh, difficult? Like, was it hard for me to be like, yeah, I'm not going to make it or something like that? Never once did I think I was never like, shit, I'm not going to make it. I'm going to have to end up back in the military. I knew for a fact I was never going back in that shit. So, um, no, it wasn't hard in that aspect. Were you always confident after leaving that you'd make it as a musician? No. I, 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 the, I, I honestly thought I would fail. I, I was prepared to die unknown, honestly. Because a lot of the artists that I used to or still do listen to, they never got recognition when they were alive. Um, I bring this up a lot, but Nick Drake is an artist... Um, he he died nobody. He died in his fucking house, depressed, thinking nobody liked him. You know what I mean? He just overdosed, and his fucking parents didn't even notice for like two days. And, you know, years later, they put his song in like a, tr- a truck commercial or some shit, and now you have all these people coming up out of his influence, literally. He'll never know, though, because in real time, in real life, when he was really there, no one treated him correctly. So it's just like, 
I saw that so much with artists that I specifically like. I was prepared for that as a reality for me because it's how people treat me anyway <laughs> at the time. So I was just like, oh, whatever. If I, if, you know, if I leave this music here and someone discovers it later, it's fine. I, I'm, I'm glad with that. Maybe I won't see it, but it's whatever, you know. Leaving a legacy is, is important. Like Jimi Hendrix has a legacy. He's been dead for 70 fucking years and people still bring him up today because of his legacy, you know. He did it. I want to say Arthur Russell was kind of like that. He didn't really get the recognition he deserved until he passed away. A lot of artists have to die or like have someone beat their ass to death or some shit. Just some, it's, they have to have something crazy happen to them for people to give a fuck. And for me, I've always judged people on the music. I'm like, this shit is fire. If it's fire, it's just fire. And I have like a very uh, unbiased view on that. And when going out and interacting with the rest of the world, I started to realize like how biased people are in music. Like they might like you because you got nice hair or they might like you because like you look good. And then, you know, it might, it doesn't always have to be about the music, but for me, it was just like, if I like the music, it's kind of like, I can't even see what you look like. Cause I just like the music, you know? And I, I, I have a very objective look on music, even though it's a subjective thing. But um, yeah, there's so many artists I listen to that I literally am heavily influenced by were unknown motherfuckers, man. Like in, the, in real time, they were not respected at all. Um, a bit off topic, but to link back to what we were doing. What did you think of your street interviews? Oh shit, that's a whole different energy. <laughs> that shit was funny as fuck, man. That was great. That was um, nerve wracking. I always thought, I, I thought I would, I honestly thought I would be decent at it, but then when I started, I was like, oh, fuck, what the fuck? That's why I kept saying, like, I need to drink and, like, because I just get looser and, like, I wouldn't feel as, like, weird saying whatever. But I loved it, man. I've never really had an interview like that before or any kind of content like that. So, like, that was, like, one of the most fun content things I think I've ever done, honestly. As you mentioned drinking, I saw in an interview that what you said you picked up drinking kind of more heavily at 29. Yeah. Why was that? Stress. I did not drink at all really until I was like 29, 30. Um, uh, I just never used to drink. But like when I got into the music industry, I'm not gonna say it made me want to drink, but like it was more available. And then like, it helps me with my nerves, you know, Um, but it also makes me run off at the mouth and say things I really don't need to say all the time. And then like, I don't become a different person. I just become like, I just like remove filters and the real degenerate in me is unsuppressed. So like, I just want to suppress that a lot of times because um, yeah, but I don't drink as much as I used to. I still drink, but like, I used to just get fucked up. Like there's an interview of me with Talib Kweli where I'm like genuinely throwing up like three times. And I felt so shitty after that. He never talked to me again. But that's okay, because he's a fucking weirdo anyway. But, like, I I still felt bad, you know? Like, if I ever saw him, I'd apologize to him. You know, I'd be like, yo, I'm really sorry about that. But, yeah, when I first got into the, to the industry, I was just drinking liquor and shit. But then I started drinking champagne. And now I just, I just drink here and there. I don't really, I don't drink like that anymore. So, yeah, I had, like, about three, four years of what I was, like, a, a fucking drunkard. Do you think you're a happy person? Hell no. <laughs> I think I have the potential to be happy, but I think it's difficult um, mentally to be consistently happy at all, especially in this day and age and shit. You're just exposed to so much negativity all the time. You know, if you, it's real easy to find toxicity. Just log into Twitter, log into anything really. Um, but being happy, like actually being like consistently happy and content with yourself is probably, as a human being, it's probably the hardest shit to do, one of the hardest things to do, especially for me. I would, I'm not gonna say I'm like a, a, ter- like a negative asshole person, yep. but I'm definitely not a happy, go lucky, like positive guy. Like I've been exposed to too much real shit, you know? I think if you're really positive, you, you've either been exposed to so much shit that you're forcing yourself to like walk past it, or you don't go outside and you need to, you know, someone needs to just walk up and punch you in the face one day for no reason so you can see like shit's not positive all the time. But like for me as a grown ass black man growing up in the States, grown up where I grew up, it is not in my best interest to walk around with a fake uh, idea of everything is positive. It could get me killed 
<laughs> depending on where I'm at. If I go down to the south, where all these clan members and shit are, and I'm like, everything's great. That's not smart. You get what I'm saying? So it's just like, the rules are different depending on what you look like, who, you know, who you are, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, I wouldn't consider myself a happy person. Do you think people are inherently good? Nope. I don't think so either. I used to work, I've worked a lot of odd jobs, general labor jobs, customer service jobs. They'll just be rude to you. Yeah. I, from what I've observed, most people are only good because they're suppressing it because there's laws and shit in place to be like, you can't do that. But like, if, if this shit was like the purge, people would just be getting shot, raped, beat up all the fucking time. It would be nothing, literally. People you wouldn't even think of, they would just be doing it just because like, there's no consequences for it. But yeah, no, I don't think people are inherently good at all. What about the people that you interviewed? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking in general. I'm, it, it sounds kind of like, like I'm catastrophizing or something, but like, in general, I think people are good. What, what, what I mean is like, everybody has the capacity for good, but I just think if given the actual choice, most people will choose to do some, something that benefits them more than something like good. So I just think people lean towards that. But no, the people I met today are all great. You know, even the guy that gave me weed on camera. <laughs> he, you know what I'm saying? Like that guy, he's on curfew and whatever. And be like, by definition, he's probably like a bad person. I don't know. But by someone's standards, he's probably a bad person. But I get a drink with that guy. I smoke it. He seems like a solid individual to me, you know, just from me talking to him. So yeah, I think the people I met today were pretty were really good, but like I don't know them personally. So like, you know, they may be racist, they could have killed somebody, they could have did anything. I just don't know them, you know. What's New Zealand like? What's New Zealand like? Um, You've been here one day, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I haven't been around enough to really experience it like that. But from what I've seen already, just from like uh, coming through the airport, going to this nice hotel, going to uh, this mall right here and talking to random people. It seems to me that people in New Zealand are really friendly, at least on the surface level, you know? Like, I was able to walk up and talk to people, like, pretty naturally. And even if they were just going out of their way, they weren't rude, you know? It's like, they're going, they're just like, oh, I, I got to get out of here. Like, sorry. Um, so what I've seen about New Zealand so far is that it's, it's really nice and beautiful, but I have to like walk around because I've, I've literally been on one block, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Is there anything else you want to add? Um, was, it, was this interview depressing? No, it was, <laughs> it was interesting. Well, we're, we're like white upper middle class kids from New Zealand. So oh like, shit, yeah, you're like, so so much. I'll say this. Um, the last thing I want to say, because um, I think people get an idea that I'm just like, hateful and this and that. I've just experienced a lot of fucked up shit. I really don't go around judging people and this and that. And you guys say like you're white, middle class, whatever. Like even that kind of, people would assume like I hate people like that, but it's really not like that. I respect everybody on a surface level. I give you baseline respect. And when I get disrespected, I just return it. And like, and I never try to judge people from where they come from. So like, if you started making music and your shit was fire, it wouldn't matter that you're white, middle class, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You're just fire. Like, Nick Drake was probably white, middle class. I don't fucking care. Like, his story is sad, you know what I mean? He might have died in a big ass house. He st it still happened. It doesn't matter, you know what I mean? Like, he can't control his parents' money. Yeah. <laughs> you get so, like, yeah. Last one. What do you love doing outside of music? <laughs> um, outside of music? Uh, I like going to, like, I really like going to wrestling shows. I have a lot of friends who are wrestlers, and uh, I like, um, I just like fucking with that kind of environment. Wrestling's very, you know, carny and hokey, and yeah. it, 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 uh, it helps me get through depression and shit like that, so it's nice. I like that, I like, um, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm kind of a redneck. I like guns. I like to, <laughs> you know, I like sitting in my house and chilling. I just, I'm a pretty regular person outside of, you know, my music, but um, yeah, I'm just, 
I have a, a horrible past, low key. So like, I'm, I've, I've mellowed out so much. Like, I, I got in the music industry when I was a little bit older. So like, I already went through my phase of like whatever. But um, yeah, I just like doing shit like that. Um, just being a regular dude, watching TV, whatever. Sweet. Cool. Boom. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Hell you yeah. get one of them to grab a photo of that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. Thank you so much. Hell yeah, man. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Let me give you this.